Hello, 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 the Connect family. Welcome back to another video. This is the Football Connect. I'm your host, Sam. And we are back again with another one as we are just, you know, in my time, just passing Christmas Day. Oh, we're still in the Christmas Day. You never know. But the time of the upload, you know, the past, you know, the Christmas time. Just want to thank you everyone for joining us. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. How did you enjoy your Christmas? And what are special about your Christmas Day? Let me know in the comment section. Because, you know, we like to hear those things. We are moving on just a few days before the new year of 2024. And it's exciting times. Um, I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. You know, it was Thanksgiving or uh, just the day before, just some days before, you know. And uh, so many people always have to talk about what they're thankful for. So before I get more into this podcast, I uh, just want to talk about what I'm thankful for. Especially of how this opportunity has really given me the opportunity to express my views, my crazy views, my crazy reactions to so many things that happened in the football world. Whatever that we see and how sometimes some of the decisions leaves us asking so many questions. I'm just grateful that I get this opportunity to come up here and talk to the people in this world and they maybe listen to their views, hear what they say, not only here on YouTube, but also on Rumble, also as well on, you know, the Spotify podcast where we just hear what we are doing here as we try by means to make sure that content is always put on every single time as we can. We're still a small channel and I'm grateful that we managed in 2023 to reach you know the threshold that youtube was requiring for us which means the four thousand hours as well as the is it the four thousand hours as well as passing that one thousand subscriber mark now we are at two thousand two thousand five hundred and something so that's amazing i'm grateful thank you to everyone who's subscribing commenting and also liking the videos because they really go and take us a long long way so what we are working on on the connect especially for this new coming year is i won't really give you more of what's going to be happening but i'll just give you a little bit of the details over what you could expect and what you could see from the football connect going forward things like for example we're going to be having some discussions we're going to have what we call weekend roundup and maybe midweek roundup with one person who's going to be joining me where we will be analyzing football and we'll be talking in tactics. It's going to be some crazy debates, trust me, because this man, I've known him for some time in my real life and we have always debated about a lot of things. So we're going to get an opportunity in 2024, maybe going further into, I don't know, the future, whatever that holds to the future, to talk more about football. And I'm telling you, you're going to have to be really ready for this one because he's a certain character. But he always brings the excitement and you, know, you will see it's all happening in 2024. Those those videos, maybe though that podcast will be done maybe on a live, live show. So that's one of the things that you could expect to see as we move forward as well as we're going to be trying to develop the content wise, everything that we're going to be putting on and just trying to create that atmosphere of excitement on, in the football world. And it, Try by means to improve, try to give, put more, better, better studio time and try to invest the little we are making right on the connect to try to make this channel the best it can be so that it can grow and we can actually have a bigger community than what we have. I want to know your thoughts in the comment section. What are you mostly interested in? in terms of like adding into the connect what you want to see and what you're expecting to see from the connect i would love to hear that maybe you want me to do maybe some fan channels reactions i've always thought of that maybe i just need a little bit push just let me know in the connect so that we can work on it because like i'm saying this is a community we're building and it will be exciting that we get to share it with you guys and we get to actually enjoy amazing moments with this so we are in this the, is this the review podcast i tried to shoot it yes the day yesterday which was on the 24th of december and i just could not i just could not to the forecast everything and the man was just so was just so tired it was a busy day but we are here we're going to try by means to redo this so this is actually a second run of an entire show that i did yesterday 
falling asleep a lot of times but anyway we i did the show back and i have to reshoot again talk about the games analyzing these games it's gonna be exciting to see how am i gonna go through them in terms of i've already done this thing and it's weird that i have to do it again so it's gonna be exciting let me know your thoughts in the comment section over what i was saying and like i said comment with what you'd want to see more on the connect and what could excite you if you want us to start doing maybe some call-in shows where we allow you friends to come in and say your thoughts in the connect let me know guys with everything that can help this podcast to grow let me know in the comment section speak up people exciting times as well as those who are watching on, on spotify who are listening on spotify and those people will be watching on rumble let me know your thoughts in the comment section also click those links that are in the description if you want to join the community where you can find us we also have our social guys you find us on facebook twitter as well as tiktok everywhere you want to see the connect and we are all talking all things premier league champions league and all the others that just brings exciting excitement in our world so let's get into this so this week we are talking about what oh what are we already talking about the games that were played that and now i think it's two days back where we witnessed one of the best games in liverpool versus arsenal which was played at enfield the interesting part about this game is this in terms of build up of the game they was that believe that the other team is miles apart of the other team there was a belief that arsenal are a highly team they are stronger they will surprise they will hit liverpool and liverpool won't be able to respond they won't be able to copy with the midfield of arsenal and all forth and so forth which i have to say after watching the game i could tell you that Liverpool could not copy with one man in Arsenal's midfield but also in terms of fighting and trying to do so much Liverpool did everything that they can especially playing against Arsenal which I felt like it was very very important because they needed to give us something to actually smile about and I think they did really show us that there is something to prove and that was exciting to watch they fought to the very end that, that's for sure they fought to the very end they gave everything that they could into this game and in fact to be honest when i look at the stats which is very important to do so this is referred to the arsenal fans okay i'm gonna do something i'm gonna take a short clip from what i did yesterday so i'm gonna post it just separately from this one so that you hear what i said when i was talking to the arsenal fans so that it doesn't feel like i'm just doing oh in my case i'm doing a repetition but i just want you to hear what i took the board so i needed to do this first show you the stats actually speak out the stats so that you can hear how the game was like so that's now the game finished one one liverpool one as now one at enfield very very important the crowd of enfield by the way club has really really thanked you guys you came up with it with the with the excitement the passion and you gave it all in the pitch to help out the boys to actually perform so both teams had 13 shots both teams two on target for us not three on target for liverpool 51 percentage position for liverpool and 41 so just the difference of a little bit in terms of passes liverpool had more pass accuracy liverpool was more than us now fouls as now had more which were 14 to 13 two yellow cards compared to five yellow cards for us now so you can see the team which was actually playing that in the game because I had one Arsenal fan coming out and saying that Liverpool were dead in this game. But yet, Liverpool did not leave the ground with so many players injured because of how the other team was playing. So, I don't see that really as something that you can hold on to. That was actually crazy. As well as no red cards, one of sides for both of them and corners 5 to Arsenal to 4 of Liverpool. I felt like... The way this game went on in the beginning, Liverpool was switched off, which is really to be is to be called important. So for Liverpool, before I go far, Endo got a yellow card, Salah got a yellow card, and the reason why Salah got a yellow card is because he was complaining to the ref after just a small foul that he was stopped when he was about to score a, a, an opportunity when he was playing with Arsenal, which was crazy. But look at this, Saka got a yellow card after a while. Declan Rice got a yellow card. Kai Havertz got a yellow card. Ben White got a yellow card. And 
I think one of the substitutes, Eden Ketia, also got a yellow card for Arsenal. So you can see that them them guys were fighting really. It was a street game. Liverpool had to learn had to be in survival mode to actually try to to be in the same level as this, this team. It was a good game, by the way. I enjoyed the way it was so much of a pressure. Arsenal usually always have been really given so much respect in having control over their game. I can tell you for a fact, this is one of the games that they didn't have any control over. They struggled to actually control the ball, ball returning, controlling the game, moving with the ball. Because every single time, there was actually some moment where I saw Liverpool attacking and the only thing that Arsenal could do was hit the balls up front. It happened especially in the second half. Because in the second half, Liverpool came out like a house on fire. They wanted to win this game. They showed everything that they could. And Arsenal could not copy with them. And the only thing that they could do is just hit the long balls. Because every single time when they tried to play it out, they were either being depossessed, especially Endo play the pivotal role in winning those three balls i felt like Klopp got it wrong because i felt like Curtis jones was also one of the ball winners that we had in the game who was actually taken out and it did not make sense for me i felt like if he was given more chance this could have been a different game so they struggled really they really did struggle to control the game as now and they ended up just trying by almost to hit the balls up forward and that was frustrating so much of their forwards martinelli struggled to get into the game not because Trent was getting the better of him because Konate kept him at bay as well as Virgil van Dijk got Gabriel Jesus to anonymous he made him anonymous I could not see Gabriel Jesus as well as Gomez we might talk about it in Constantino Tsimikas who really struggled to deal with Saka but since when Gomez came in Gomez pocketed Saka the whole entire game. So many Arsenal fans don't want to hear this but that is the honest truth. Go ask anyone who was watching the game. He pocketed Saka and Saka struggled to even try to, to, to create anything meaningful in the game because that's how good of a player this guy was and I enjoyed what Gomez did as well as this don't even stop them from going forward. He kept attacking. There was actually an opportunity almost to score the goal. If he just a little bit it had bounced differently, that would have been a goal. But I can tell you, his goal is really, really close to coming through. And I can feel it is very, very close. But I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. What do you think of the game? Especially with the amount of players that we didn't have. We didn't have McAllister. We did not have Andy Robertson. And some of the players that were there. And the Arsenal did not have Timber. But Timber did not really play so much games for us now, so we can't really recognize him as a miss. They didn't have Tomiaso. To, to of course, you can tell that that was a miss because the guy was also in that same position. Sinchenko struggled in the game. He had a crazy game. There were moments that I felt like Liverpool, if they had done better, this would have been a different game. The fifth, first 15 games, minutes, I felt like Arsenal could have scored so many goals. Arsenal, Alisson had to be active in some of the opportunities, but also I felt like that's when we started to see the growth of the defense of Liverpool actually growing into the game, stopping everything that Arsenal was trying to create, and that just made the game much, much, much more exciting to see how they were able to copy with it, they were able to stop these guys from doing anything, and I enjoyed that part. Going forward with the game, Liverpool got the started controlling from the minute 15 going forward until maybe the last five minutes of the first half it was liverpool house on fire going forward to a point that they put so much pressure that the only way that at some point the captain of arsenal could stop that team from being hurt was actually controlling the ball with his hand taking it out from the line of danger where salah was a, in the opportunity to score so he, it was actually his end which he used in terms of getting that's the word I can use. Getting actually the ability to have an opportunity to get something into the game. And the interesting part is this. Because I spent so much time listening to some Arsenal fans. And I think I should do some reaction to that. Which is very important. Because they're talking about that. It was them being 
awarded by the gods for so many times they have played so well but they were not given the opportunity to do so which i did not did not make sense for me because we talk about we talk about this every single time that people always have to stand against this VAR things because if this continues it will be a problem but i struggled to see them they were actually excited Mikel Arteta actually told us that he didn't see anything like the guy is always one of the most active people in the pitch whenever the game has been played how the hell does he come out on light television and tell people that he did not see anything i have to give some props to people like saliba who came out and said that that was a penalty and if that is that or had happened the other side i'll be filming but we don't control the VA, the referees and what they do which i respect that's a man who earned my respect into everything that happened because it's very important to stand up every single time whenever the situations are like this i don't know if the pgmo will ever apologize after what we saw but in fact i think they're actually shy they're just tired of trying to apologize coming up and apologizing because they don't really mean anything those apologies because they're costing teams but now these are almost nine points that liverpool have lost because of the decisions made by the pgmo it's crazy i hope that it could change as time goes on but in terms of the game as a home i really enjoyed it second half was actually my favorite especially because most of, of the game liverpool were in control since from the beginning of the whistle they should have taken chances that trent alexander no chance should have been the difference maker so many people believe so but the way the ball bounced you could actually feel sorry for him but it was a difference maker and Arsenal tried to control the game in the in the in the last minute, later stages of this one, maybe 15 minutes of the last 15 minutes, and they really struggled. They could not do anything. So when you really look at it, you can say that maybe Arsenal had a maximum of 30 minutes of of trying to get something meaningful, while Liverpool dominated the other 60 minutes. That just tells you how big of a team it was, how big of a clash it was, and. One thing I have to really give some respect for are the defenders for both sides. Because if it wasn't because of the defense, this could have been one of those games where we'd be like, how many goals are going to be scored in this game? And that really helped so much because they got to control the game. And at the end of the day, you can say that maybe they deserved it. So let's see how Liverpool can move on from this. Let's see how they can build up from this and try to create something meaningful that maybe we could be proud of as we go forward. But this was the game, people. I want to know your thoughts in the comment section. I've talked about it. Like I told you, I'm going to put out maybe the first the Arsenal segment of that video that I told me could not, did not really come out well. So don't judge me on whatever you see. But just enjoy what I was talking about when I was talking about Arsenal versus Liverpool. Click the like button, subscribe to the connect. Let's move on to the next games that we played. And I need to move so fast because remember, we have some predictions to do. Crystal Palace played against Brighton. Brighton are really in a crisis. This is not the deserved Brighton that we have come, you know, accustomed to or come used to. They, they look so different and they are struggling to actually, you know, create something that is meaningful. They drew against Crystal Palace, but one person can come out as well as, as, as well and say that Crystal Palace just beat Man City. So, oh no, they just drew with Man City, if I'm not mistaken. So, what would you expect to have Brighton that are also struggling? I think they really do enjoy playing with a team that likes to keep a high line, which is Brighton in this case, Man City in the other case, as well as Liverpool, even though we won by two goals to one, we struggled in that game. But if you could tell, that goal was a, actually a penalty, which I felt like was not a penalty, but it was given. That just tells you everything about how this one went on. Aston Villa played against Sheffield United, one of the best games I saw in terms of the fighting spirit that the new manager of Sheffield United is trying to put onto these players. Una Emery's team struggled to create some meaningful chances to actually create something that could, you know, get them to believe or winning something. They did struggle. They couldn't actually copy. They tried to go forward. They tried to do as much as they could, but they just could not get the final touch, the finishing touch, which I think was very important for them to even get something in the game. At the end of the day, the game came out and it ended 1-1 with the last-minute goal scored. They actually, all the goals were actually scored at 
87 minutes going forward and and that was it that's a crazy game to actually think about when you really look at how the game was going and how things are actually are we doing that just makes one of the most exciting and interesting matches so i'm i'm really proud in terms of what sheffield are doing maybe there is something mean exciting that has been built uh man city did not play because they went in and they were clear crowned this world champions oh club world cup champions of the season they won against Fluminense, the brazilian team which is really exciting when you watch it they played so well we got to witness some of amazing players that we've been watching for brazil the players like adren uh adre the guy that andre the player that liverpool wants marcelo we saw him again back again in those big 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 things and games but you couldn't do anything because you know it's not real much right but he has this title already, so you know there is a chance to groom. Huh? Put some respect to Flo Moens, the belief and the respect that they do have and the confidence, how they were able to break the attack of Man City that was out of this world. So I have to give some respect to them on that. But Man City played so well. They caused problems, they attacked, they, they scored early, they continued every opportunity they get, they made sure that they make sure that they plan is this Flo Moens the team. Rodri almost got injured. He's saying he's okay, but we'll get to find out if there's nothing, you know, more serious over his injuries. But he talked about it and he said he's okay and he's ready to go. So we have to see what happens because Man City needs to start to kick on, especially when they're coming from Club World Cup after winning silverware. How can that help them to do something, especially that they will be playing against Everton coming soon. So it's going to be exciting to see how... They take out what they just achieved in the club World Cup to come and create something meaningful that they can actually be able to struggle to create something amazing and exciting to actually enjoy to watch what's going to happen as we go forward. But congratulations to them for picking their fifth trophy of the season. And remember, they have the FA Cup, Champions League, Premier League 3, plus Super Cup as well as Club World Cup. So five titles in one season. That is huge. That is very, very huge. Tottenham Hotspurs played against Everton at, in one of the best games I've watched this season. Everton, but also I learned something ex interesting about this Everton squad. As much as it was one of the most exciting games that we have ever watched, Everton really struggled with the team that gave them the bomb. And that's what Tottenham Hotspurs did. They gave Everton the bomb. And every single time, whenever Everton were losing the balls, Tottenham Hotspurs were very quick to punish them. And Richarlison scored an amazing goal, which he was celebrating. And he remembered, oh my God, I'm coming from Everton. And I have to give some respect to that because at least he showed that he's a human after all. Usually he does some crazy things and you wonder what's wrong with him. But the game played so well. I think Everton's equalizer came a little bit late. If it was scored a little bit early, that could have given them even the momentum to believe and try to get something in the game. But it was exciting to watch. I enjoyed it so much well. And I can't wait to see what happens as we move on. The one by two goes to one. There was a last minute shot which hit the post and it went and I think it just touched Vicario's leg and that's how it did not go in. The goal line technology showed that the ball was not fully in. So... These are the fine margins that are able to make a difference when we talk of football wise. So you never know. Do me a favor, click the like button, subscribe to the connect as we continue doing our analysis of the game that we played this week. Nottingham Forest played against Bournemouth. The game finished Nottingham Forest 2, Bournemouth 3. When you look at this, you will say, okay, that's Bournemouth dominating, but it was different from what we saw. The story which was written in this game is actually more exciting and more inspiring, more powerful than what even people think. They fought to the very end. Bournemouth struggled to penetrate with this team. Even if when the new team of Forest were one man down, which I think it happened early in the first half, Bournemouth struggled, but they never stopped attacking. They caused so much problems to this Bournemouth team, and it was exciting to watch. But I want to know your thoughts in the comment section about that. Fulham with a shocker defeat for Ed Burnley, who, by the way, we are going to them next this week, Liverpool. 
it's gonna be exciting now because now there is this whole entire mess now it's, it becomes a little bit scary and when it's scary there are so many mistakes that happens and when that happens you know we hold our hands we lose it a little bit but it's gonna be exciting to see what happens fulham struggled in this game they just could not get into the game and Burnley got the game which is well deserved they have to move on with it Luton Town one of the most exciting games of the week they beat Everton by they beat Newcastle by one goal to new at their home ground so you can tell that their home ground is something exciting to always show so I don't know we we'll definitely see how the game went on but I want to hear that in the comment section the last but not least was Wolves versus Chelsea this is one of the most world beaters of the games it left everyone speechless what happened in the game and what we expected were not really matching these two teams were exciting to watch they did everything that they could but chelsea again I need to drink sip of this drink a bit before i talk about this guy they just struggle they just struggle i have no idea what's wrong with chelsea one man has to be really strong, worried, especially with what we are seeing from this team. It feels like they just cannot get themselves into the games. They just don't know how they will do it and how they actually produce, you know, some meaningful chances because they are really struggling to do something meaningful. They, beat, they, they, they suffocate the big teams, but they lose to the smaller teams. This has been happening so many times with the Chelsea squad and now I'm worried if they are ever going to do something even meaningful. I'm even worried if they are ever going to do something, something that we can really be, be, be proud of. And if we continue seeing these things, can this actually be sustainable in the long game? In the long day? Because now I'm sure that if they lose their next game, some of those bottom teams are going to go top. And relocation teams are now picking up from they're now doing some exciting things. We were being shown some pictures from the Christmas by the Premier League of teams that which were at the bottom, but they were able to turn it around in the final and actually get something. So it's exciting to see how this one will play out. But game week 18 was exciting, people. We saw it all, and now we have to move on. We move on to game week 19 and the bigger game match of this week 19 is Aston Villa, Manchester United versus Aston Villa. It's a bigger name because United is still the biggest company in the world and now say Jim Radcliffe is now there. I think it's going to be announced tomorrow when this happens or when this video comes out. It's going to be exciting to see what really happens in this because we don't really know how it's going to play out like. United have to start winning something. We, above everything we're going to talk about, whatever we do, United have to start winning something. This cannot continue. But they're playing Aston Villa. And Aston Villa, they have a tendency of always show, shocking so many teams. This could be one of the games we're going to have to remember and actually enjoy it for more. Because I feel like they will make sure that this team suffocates. Anyway, we'll see how the game plays out. That game is coming after the Liverpool game, which has been played. Burnley versus Liverpool. It's one of the games that I'm really excited about. I can't wait to see how Liverpool plays on that one. I hope they win the game so that we go at the top, which maybe will be replaced by Aston Villa at the end of the week day. They won't really replace us. They will still be behind us. Then we'll wait for Arsenal, who will be playing against West Haram in, at their home ground. It's going to be exciting to see him. So, my prediction over this one is going to be Aston Villa 3, Manchester United 1. They have to find some form somewhere else or else it's going to be a peak for them. Nottingham Forest are going to be going to the Jodies as Newcastle host of the Nottingham Forest. It's going to be one of the big earlier games that are going to be played. My man is on Newcastle winning. Nottingham Forest might be doing something, but I believe Newcastle is the upper hand. Sheffield United is going to be playing against Luton Town and I'm telling you, that's very important. Sheffield, if they don't get something against Luton, then the Premier League is not there. <laughs> but as well, Luton Town are coming from beating Newcastle. So the confidence is there. So this is like a championship a remake of a game. Can't wait to see what happens. But the, the team that wins in this game, I think they'll actually create a game in the bottom three. So we're going to be exciting to watch. This is a bottom part clash which people have to keep an eye on 
like I said, uh, in terms of Newcastle versus Nottingham Forest, I think Newcastle 2, Nottingham Forest 1. Sheffield United versus Luton Town. Luton Town 1, Sheffield United 0, because I still believe Luton I have an upper hand. Bournemouth versus Fulham. I think Fulham is going to lose, especially after losing their last games. I think they're going to lose this game. Maybe by 3 goals to nil. Dominic Solanke will also be one of the goal scorers in that game. Burnley versus Liverpool is going to be at Burnley. Burnley have really been struggling with performance, but they picked up something coming by that game that they played. But I still feel like Liverpool is the upper hand, and I think Liverpool will win this game either by four goals to nil or what. I feel like they will. So it's going to be exciting to see how that one plays out. And like I told you, the Manchester United versus Aston Villa game, I've already talked about it. You can go check it out. It's there on the comments. Hear my thoughts and my prediction and what I'm expecting. Arsenal host Crystal Palace and I think Arsenal gonna lose this game because let's be honest people this team has not looked at all to create anything exciting they have not given anybody any belief that they can do something meaningful they have not even shown that they can actually fight for their lives they can actually sacrifice so much of theirs to get something in the game they haven't and because of that that's why I just refuse to believe that they can Give us something exciting, some exciting moments to talk about. I don't see it. I wish to see it, but I don't see it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section over that one. My prediction is, and listen to this, Crystal Palace 2, Chelsea 1. The other game that we're going to be playing is Brentford versus Wolves. One of the exciting games to watch. Wolves are also a house on fire after beating a team just last week. Can they continue with that? I think they can. So it's going to be exciting to see what happens. And Everton are playing against Man City in one of the biggest clashes in the Premier League because this could be one of the determining factors to see if City are going to start to pre start their title charge. They've won the league. They've won the, the whatever the trophy that they won, Club World Cup. They do have the belief. They now know that they can achieve something more. Can that give them the spirit to come and shock Everton? Well, we have to wait for that one to actually happen. Let's wait and see what happens. But I'm telling you, it's going to be exciting to watch. Brighton vs. Tottenham Hotspurs. It's going to be one of those games that we need to see what De Zerbi will do. And let's see how he will work on that. But one thing that I'm excited. 